Hi, Ruben van Roon again. I have this amazing, surprising, freaky, strange story for you to share in the recording and music industry. And of course, about drummers, Mr. Steve Gatt is involved. But first, please like and subscribe to this great educational drum channel. We have a very, very freaky, very strange, and I'm a little bit surprised and I'm, help me out guys here. Help me out, please. I will set the scene a little bit for you before we dive into this freakness. We are living in the 70s, the end of the 70s, and for the young people you have to know that when you talk about recording, it was all analog. We had a mixer, 24, later 32, we had an old tape machine, and we had some outboard gears, and of course the mics. And in that days the engineers, the sound engineers were the kings, man. It was so hard to record. That was a whole other thing than what it is now. It was not digital, it was analog. You had to invent a lot of things because there was not so much possible. Okay, then we have a band. That's the first. I think you know, and especially when you are a Steve Gadd fan, you know this album. It's the Aja album of Steve Gadd. Steve Gadd, Steve Gadd, Steve Gadd. Okay, it's not about this album, but it's start of the story. Main characters of the story are in, involved in this project also. Like Donald Fagan, Walter Becker, Roger Nichols and Elliot Shiner. Four incredible names on the department of recording and mixing, man. That were the big shots. Elliot Shiner and Robert Nichols are also involved in the album who came after Aja. It was Gaucho. And you have to remember that this album, Aja, is recorded in 1976. This came out in 1980, so there were four years. Four years. This album is also a little bit involved. It's Nightfly, what came after Gaucho. Solo album of Mr. Donald Fagan. It's all about this album, Gaucho. Why it took so long? It's because Donald Fagan and Walter Becker were really freaks. You had no editing. It was all recorded in one time. And that was a real profession in the times. We called it studio musicians. And the A-class studio drummers were always involved in this kind of records of Steely Dan. We talk about Bernard Purdy, The King, Rick Marotta, Steve Gadd, James Gadson, Ed Green, and of course, Jeff Pocaro. The main drummers who are involved in the albums of Steely Dan. For me, and for you, they were the top drummers. Why? Because they were consistent, they groove like hell, they had a backbeat from heaven, and they are very musical, work fast. So that were the priorities of the drummers, and the groove of these drummers, and the feel, and the timing, and for me the consistency, that's a craft. But for Mr. Donald Fake and Mr. Walter Becker, that was not enough. Donald Fagan was working with a studio drummer, not named of course, and was getting a little bit frustrated and said to Roger Nichols, for as a joke, Roger, can you make a machine to give me a perfect drummer, man? All the drummer sucks. He was really hard. I think something like that. <laughs> okay, that's for me. Already I start like, eh? Again? Huh? Huh? That Roger Nichols, who was a very famous and good and precise engineer, thought, hmm, maybe that's an idea. So he starts working and he said to Mr. Fagan, if you give me the budget, I will make you that machine. So for this record, I heard, and I don't know if it's true, that $150,000, huh? huh? and Donald Fagan and Walter Becker says, that's okay. That came from the record company. So there was all the money in the world in that time. And he went to work on that machine. And one day he came in the studio with a machine and he had a name, it called Wendell. And on the records you see credits to Wendell. But you don't know exactly what it is. Here it says on Gaucho, it says sequencing and special effects, Roger Nichols and Wendell. 
And then I heard that Wendell had something to do with drums. So in this interview of Elliot Shiner with that amazing guy with that interview, we asked Elliot Shiner about Wendell. And what's the answer? What about my rival? Machine. Okay, and a third world man? Uh, real. My mouth full completely open, man. I was out for hours. So, Wendell is a machine, and it was actually the first drum machine, digital drum machine. So we had analog drum machines, like the Roland TR-909, but that was synthesis based, you know, on frequencies and everything. It was like an analog synth. But this was the first sampler, sampler drum machine. So you could uh, record drums and put that in a machine and went on editing with also with the space, not really quantizing, I think, but with the space where you place all the beats. So Donald Fager, he was of course very happy. What you see on the tracks, every track had in the credit a drummer. Babylon Sisters, we have Bernard Purdy, of course, Hey 19, Rick Marotta, Glamour Profession, Steve Gett, Gaucho, Jeff Porcaro, Time Out of Mind, Rick Marotta again, My Rifle, Steve Gett, Third World Man, Steve Gett. Huh? Huh? But what Elliot Shiner tells us is that Donald Fagan put Steve Gett in a drum machine. <laughs> I still cannot get it. So in his mind, the best drummer of the world for me. But why? Because he's so consistent, so fluent, and he has the greatest feel and groove. And he plays on a thousand albums. And, and Donald Fagan thinks, well, Steve Gadd. Well, no, I will take him through a machine that I can quantize him, put all the Steve Gadd feel out of him. And when you listen closely to Gaucho, you have to put it on with this in knowledge. And you always, you think, why are their grooves so static, man? The machine. So Donald Fagan invented, together with Roger Nichols, the first computerized, quantized, mechanically sound drums. And of course, it's also ahead of his time. That's true. It was before the Lindrum, guys. But man, to use real drummers like Steve Gadd, Rick Marotta, Jeff Porcaro only for the sounds <laughs> of a drum machine. <laughs> hey man, what do you think about this story, man? Please tell it to me if I'm wrong. And, and it's, it's an other, but this is with all the interviews linked down below, you hear that this is a little bit the story about Wendell. And this three albums, you know, the Nightfly, he uses this also on the Nightfly, monumental albums, man. But this is fully live, that's what we know. So, shall we listen to Aja and the drum solo again? Okay, see you next time. Please like and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment, of course, and share it. Yeah.